Hi there, it's Mark here and welcome to our thought for the day. Uh, to start with, uh, today I'm going to read from Matthew's Gospel. I'm going to read the parable of the talents. So Jesus says, For it is as if, it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents came, also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Before I uh, was ordained, uh, I was a youth worker and I remember working through this parable with a youth group each character was taken by one of the young people and as we read through it I invited them to respond kind of how they might be feeling as if they were one of those characters and we did that at various points during the parable. I recall as we got to the end of the parable that one of the young people who was taken on the role of the master in Jesus' story when I asked him to respond in a certain way to that, um, to the final, uh, the final slave who just hid in the ground what his master had given him, he uh, he chastised the servant. He said, "He said, why didn't you make more of my money?" He said, "You didn't risk it." I was reminded of that as I read this parable this week, a parable in which there are three servants each entrusted with a particular amount of money. And a talent was an amount of money. In fact, it was quite a large amount of money. And they're given that and their master goes away. Now, two of them invest and double the money and are commended by the master upon his return. One, however, of course, did nothing but hide it in the ground. And we see this was much to his master's displeasure. 
And of course, there are many ways of interpreting Jesus' stories, and I'm certainly not offering an exhaustive reading of this parable. But as reflected on it, I wonder if it challenges a particular posture, posture towards life. Do we live out of fear? Fear of what might happen if we try something and it doesn't go the way we hope? Do we worry that our mistakes might define us? What if, God forbid, we actually try something but we fail at it dismally? Surely it's better, therefore, to take what we've been given, simply bury it in the ground, not use it, that we might spoil it. Perhaps I wonder if that was part of the problem that so angered the master in the story. If we are too afraid to try something, to step outside of our comfort zones, to take risks, there isn't much anyone, let alone God, can do with that. In fact, I like to think that if the third servant had indeed done something with the money he'd been given, but maybe lost all of it, that the master would have been equally as pleased as he was with the other servants. Do we live feeling a need to protect what we have? Or do we live out of, a, out of the abundance of the good gifts we have? Of course, I'm not talking about being reckless we're talking about using what we've been given that we might please the giver. For God has created each of us with different gifts, different abilities, different talents. God wants us to use those, not to hide them away. Like the servants in the parable, given different amounts, you know, we are all different. We have distinct passions. Aspects to our character, things that make us so uniquely us. Maybe to risk it is to realise that you know, we might not always get it right. But that we can live in the freedom and the confidence of who we are. Who God has created us to be. And to use that with the assurance and the expectancy we've all got a unique contribution to make.